Hi, uh, welcome to this first video in this channel. Uh, I'm Vaping Strong, and uh, today I want to take a look at one of my favorite uh, borrow type devices uh, that came out, and that is the Ponte. Now, I saw a lot of negativity around it, um, which kind of prompted me, to, prompted me to make this video. Um, because it can be a bit tricky uh, building this one or uh, using it. Uh, so let's just go, you know, over it for a second. Like in the box, it will come in this kind of box just to slide on. And once you get it open, you get this card. In here, you'll have your uh, your tank, and this is the mod connector, which you can see it's installed on this mod currently. And also, you get this little box, and it has some goodies like uh, you know, or rings and stuff like that. Uh, this device doesn't. It's a it's a mesh RDTA, and it doesn't come with a mesh. Uh, for you to install so keep that in mind if you want to get this device that you might need to to get that separately uh, it also doesn't come with a mesh coiling tool although I mean you can use anything I'm just using this uh, base of a screwdriver here um, I'll be showing how to build it but I won't be bending a new mesh instead I'm going to use a mesh that I currently have there um, so I've got actually like three of those because I really like them uh, and I'll talk that about about it a bit later but um, I got one installed in uh, this uh, billet box uh, clone from SXK and another in this one and I've got also in a, in a pulse um, and I really like those so really good vape uh, in this one I need to rebuild this Ponte, uh, this silver one. Uh, yeah, so let's get that going and I'll show you exactly how I do it and uh, what, what trouble to look for when you're building this one because there's been a lot of people, you know, saying uh, they're, they're experiencing some issues, finical connection, and there's going to be a batch two of these, uh, so I'm pretty sure that it's going to be somewhat fixed in the future. Uh, but if you got one of the batch ones uh, and you want to see exactly uh, how you should build it, um, you're in luck. Uh, you can also see I'm using the atemporal panels um, and they fit quite good for this build box and also in terms of, you know, the airs. So if you're looking for a more uh, direct lung hit, you need those. <coughs> So let me just take this off quick. Yeah, so let me just wipe the tank for a second. So if we go over uh, what we got with the Ponte, uh, you can see that you have this kind of recessed side. And that's a really smart design choice because then if you use it on a billet box or a device that has a side mounted airflow, even if you get just like a Cthulhu, you get got like only the window, uh, air will actually come up from the sides as well and uh, get into the coil. Uh, it's not like a direct path um, as something like the panels give you, um, but for a stricter direct line hit, it's really, really fine. Uh, it worked quite, quite well. Uh, you got this little gasket that you use to refill. Um, I kind of disliked it at first because uh, it's kind can, I can't open it with a fingernail. Uh, that being said, I can just open it with the panel when I'm actually, you know, actually looking to refill it. So it's not really that matter, much of an issue. Uh, a thing to note that on the bottom here, like you got the normal, you know, logos and let's see if it will focus. You got the logos and everything, but you also got an adjustable pin, uh, and that will come in as a port later when we're actually trying to debug it and uh, 
this is basically your point of adjustment for any of your mods. Um, it's similar to what the Pulse has uh, on on its connect on the connection pane, but I mean, it's on the device itself. Uh, this top part comes off to reveal the build deck. As you can see, I got a Clapton mesh installed there right now, and I've been using this one for like eh, I don't know about a week. Uh, it, it can still go, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, I think it's time we maybe put on some new cotton in there. Uh, so I won't be changing the coil itself because I think the coil is uh, is fine. It's not too dirty and uh, it works quite well. So I'll just show you the way that I do it uh, when I want to uh, rewake it. Um, so on the build plate itself, and let's see if I can Get, you got the screws on the side here, and those will basically hold your clamps. And I heard there's some issues with people in the clamps. I know that Jay Hayes uh, had some issues on his. Um, I don't have issues on mine, but uh, if you do, I suggest you contact the guys over at Alcavate. Uh, I did have some issues with another Ponte, uh, and they help me not only solve them, but they're also sending me a replacement. Um, and it really seems to be like a nice group of people. Uh, yeah, so I unscrewed this little screw here. And for rewaking, re that's basically all I'm going to do uh, in terms of the screws. I don't want to take the entire thing out. Uh, right now it's like completely loose, so I'm just going to pull this up a bit and push push it out of the way and just take the existing cotton out and throw it in the trash. One thing to note is when you rewick these uh, meshes, especially the Clapton ones I found is that you get a lot of this little cotton stuck in there. Uh, you want to get that as clean as possible. Just stick it up because I'm gonna dry fire it now uh, to to actually clean the coil and uh, if there's any ex like leftover cotton over there, uh, you will see it like going in flames, <laughs> basically like a small fireball. All right, so now we got the back uh, tied uh, back tightened down, and I'm just gonna really see a bit of cotton left. Uh, I'm gonna just dry fire it for a bit. Yeah, and and usually like I would also go to you know to the tap and just give it some a bit of rinsing, but uh, like I said, it's pretty clean already, so there's no real need for it right now. Keep in mind that I'm doing this entire thing while there's still liquid <laughs> in the tank. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really come out um, as I move it because of the steel wicks. So it's quite fine. So now that we dry burned it, I unscrewed it a bit again and I'm taking it out. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be putting new cotton in. So especially with these Clapton coils, uh, they can be really like, uh, not finicky, but you know, like they can break really easily if you put pressure on the side like that yeah so what i like to do is like i kind of take it off and and clamp it down the cotton and that also allows me to get like a lot of cotton in there uh, so yeah i got some uh, prime bacon cotton for today uh and i'm using quite quite a heavy strip of cotton here and let's see if this will go in so i am going to compress it a bit and then i'm just going to be pulling the mesh strip a bit use this screwdriver yeah so now it's in there 
And what I want to do now is uh, basically get this into the clamp. Uh, but keep note that, and this is the first point of failure, you don't want any cotton actually going into the clamp, uh, between the clamp and the, and the, on the coil itself. So I'm going to be taking caution of that and, and really pushing the, the, the cotton to the side to make sure that it doesn't actually go in there and also use the screwdriver a bit to just make sure. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to be pushing down the mesh into place and screw down. the coil itself. So now it's screwed down and it's really tight there and I'm going to adjust it a little bit because I just want a bit more on the side here. Uh, and we'll get into lengths in a second here. So I'm going to be cutting it kind of with the, the tank portion of it. The way I like to uh, weak the, the ponte is like having enough cotton but you really don't want too much so I'm going to be trimming it to the to the side of the of the build deck itself and I'll do the same to this side and now I'll just use my screwdriver and fan it out a bit, but really not that much. In general, you, I don't know for this one, you didn't, you don't, you don't really want to play around with it a lot. Um, it works quite well if you just let it be. And but I'm just, I don't like having like big clamps of cotton. Uh, yeah. So now, really, all I do is just, I don't even use like a tool for this. I just like push it into place. Not too firm, not to like bunch it up, but just push it into place and start like minimizing it into the channel. And I do it on all sides to get it as much as I can. So when you look at the top, I don't want it to be like like this, like extending extending out. And we'll get to why in a second, but I want it to get to get it as clean as I can and keep this area, the metal connection part, uh, clear of cotton. So I'm just going to finagle them a bit. And that looks fine to me. And uh, yeah, now let's do the other side. Same kind of story. I just kind of generally push it into place. And if you have a not too much cotton, like here I can see that I have a bit of leftover cotton on the un underside of the of the coil, so I'm gonna just give it a little trim. And I'm just gonna be placing that cotton on top of the the steel wicks. And the same kind of deal, I'm going to be making sure that the cotton doesn't extend where it doesn't need to be. I want it really to be as contained as I can into the channel area. Let's see what we got here. I'm sorry if you can't see exactly what I'm doing because it's really hard doing this top down. Uh, and this is my first time, you know, recording and doing that stuff. So sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of quite happy with how this turned out already. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I'm trying to keep it as clear as possible from the sides and contain it into the channel. There's actually some liquid already going <laughs> going up. Um, 
yeah so it's the same on this side as well maybe a tiny bit more here can, can also push it a bit you also want to take note of I like to do it I don't know if it actually makes a difference but uh, this the side of the of the clamps if you can just make sure it's contained as much as possible even on the sides this side looks good and I'm gonna just making sure that the clamps are tightened down for good all right so in terms of wicking that's that's how I do it uh, at this point uh, I'm going to be using I'm um, just my own liquid it's a uh, shisha type of liquid very molassy apple type of stuff and I'm gonna just really saturate that mesh and uh, give it a few a few hits to get rid of that uh, new cotton taste and also to see that it's actually working now if you're having issues with the ponte uh, jumping arms uh, when it's on the bore itself on the device um, and not on the mod itself like right now I'm getting I don't know it's it's it reads really like uh, point free um, and it works completely fine so if on the mod I'll be getting jumping ohms, that means that probably the issue isn't with the clamps uh, or like the gen. Sorry, like the general connection, uh, because it does work on the mod itself, and it means that there's no real issue. In that sense, that sense, and your main issue would be then um, the top cap. Uh, and by by the issue being the top cap, uh, we'll get to this in a second. But it can be various things. All right. So usually I'd burn it a bit more, but the sake of time give it a bit more yeah so at this point we want to close the top cap and there's a few gotchas uh, that may result in connection issues and stuff like that uh, so basically how uh, this is make, making a connection like you can see it inside it has this kind of uh, levels to it and it needs to make a good connection all around and that's why I really want to get that cotton you know nice and uh, in those channels and not overlapping uh, because if it is it may result in short circuit or atomizer failures and stuff like that so you want to keep it as clean as possible from cotton interfering with the connection um, and I, I guess it, it's it's the same for every you know every atomizer but in this one because of the surface area I, I guess it's it's important in particular uh, another gotcha is this o-ring uh, you want to watch out that if you're putting you know when you're putting the top cap if it's really tightened down it may like you know squeeze on itself and actually break the connection uh, so you just you know want to make sure that that's not an issue um, and I also like to keep you know just give it a little wipe from any juice in that area to make sure that everything is well and good. Uh, when you're building the Ponte, this is the front side, and I f from what I can tell, it it is important because it doesn't like the the top part doesn't end up in the same place. Um, yeah, so you just press it down and ready to go. So let's unscrew this. Just move stuff around. Trip tip. 
Now I'm using just some integrated drip drip, drip tip I got from Fastack. Uh, it's been work, working quite well for me, but uh, I do have to uh, adjust the connection pin that we talked about earlier uh, because it, it just didn't like the, the the nut itself didn't extend deep enough so let's see if it works yeah and I'm getting 0.2456 that's around the place that it needs to be yeah when I fire it's uh, yeah 2.5 vapes wonderfully. All right, so this was my build guide. Uh, yeah, and now let's switch on top and talk about it a bit more about the Ponte. See ya. All right, so this was building the Ponte and let's see how it goes. Awesome. Yeah, so one of the things that I really like about the Ponte uh, is the amount of vapor it gets and the flavor it gets. Being a mesh coil, I guess you can say it's kind of uh, obvious that would be the case. Uh, this is my first mesh coil that I ever tried. Uh, I never tried the Profile uh, RDAs and I honestly not even that into rebuildables. Like I got some devices, you know, the Profile Recurve and stuff like that. but. Uh, uh, I never got into rebuildables for a long time, so um, after trying a bunch, you know, dual coils and stuff like that, I really love the dual coil amount of vapor and also the taste that you get out of them. Uh, really great devices. Um, but they sit on big squonk mods or, you know, you need to drip it yourself and whatever, whatever, whatever. So we all know, like, the the all-in-ones like the billet box clones or uh, the poles, stuff like that, uh, are really cool because you know they combine it into a nice little package. Um, the problem is that most of the other bridges that I have, uh, and that includes the 520 from Cthulhu and Vessel from the poles, uh, really nice devices, but they don't, they either don't have a lot of airflow. Um, they either don't, maybe they don't have a lot of taste. Uh, m most of them don't have a lot of vapor, uh, which is perfectly fine. I know that these devices are typically for MTL users, uh, but before going the rebuildable route, um, I was actually like a sub ohm vapor for, I don't know, two or three years. Really like the feeling of, you know, a lot of vapor, uh, a lot of taste. Um, and sometimes I also like restricted direct lung, um, but I usually usually enjoy um, direct lung itself. So uh, w when I saw the Ponte going up for the first time, uh, that that's what drew me in, and it doesn't disappoint. Uh, this produces a ton of vapor. Uh, it produces a ton of flavor. Uh, it has a good capacity and the grooved sides allow it to be used uh, even with you know closed panels on on this on this mod it's entirely entirely closed so the only air intake would be from the side and still uh, we'll show you nice drag yeah even with the panels closed it produces a great amount of flavor, uh, may maybe even a bit, a bit better flavor because it's more contained, and uh, a lot of vapor, uh, which I really like. On the devices like the the Pulse AIO, uh, and this one doesn't have a Ponte in it, but uh, it gets a lot of hair flow because uh, maybe you, you like the the sizes are bigger than the billet boxes, so. 
I know, the whole thing feels more airy. I think it also has to do with the fact that the bow portion of the pulse is a bit bigger. So more hair gets up. Um, so the, if you're looking for a, a direct lung, the pulse may be a, a better choice for you. Uh, but even with the, the billet boxes type devices and also the Cthulhu, which doesn't have doesn't have the, the side uh, and this one I have also the atemporal panels on um, even if you if you have this kind of mod you still get plenty of hair uh, out of the out of, out of it and so it's a really well thought out design uh, and I think it's a shame that so many people had issues with it um, <clears throat> let me just take a quick drag Yeah, but what I'm hoping that this video shows you is uh, the gotchas. So the gotchas are really, you know, the top out connection point and the nut that you're using uh, are really important to check out. Uh, if you're having issues, you know, use maybe a different integrated tip or the flash nut um, or whatever. Just try another one because they, they can, you know, have varying success in, in making a connection with this with this tank. Uh, is it the fault of the device? In a sense, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a design uh, type of thing. Uh, when something doesn't connect, it means that there's been issues. That being said, there are some good things about the design. Uh, aside from, you know, being a, a mesh Voro and stuff like that, um, the connection pin being extendable is really the, the, the solution to most of these issues um, because you can adjust it yourself and just make sure that it works uh, regardless of mod you know and, and the Cthulhu and the build boxes doesn't have the the pin themselves so it's really it's really a good design in that sense um, but yeah another good thing about it is that Orca Vapes uh, the guys who make this along with Mr. Just Right One um, they took care of me really nice. Uh, Joel himself uh, reached out and I talked to him. Uh, Joel is the guy who, who, who made this one. Uh, but the company itself also talked to me and we they arranged a new one to be sent out from the new batch. Hopefully the new batch will have fixed all of these issues um, that people have experienced. But so far, uh, I just love this device. I love this device. I think it's uh, probably the best bow experience I had. Um, and again, I, I have a few packages. I'm not you know, the most adept. I have the 520. I have the vessel, which I I really, I really like the vessel. Um, I think it works beautifully and uh, works amazingly well. I think it's closest uh, to the Ponte in performance. Uh, I also have the dope bridge and uh, two mob minis uh, that I like um, but overall in terms of everything all together um, and that means you know wicking uh, build, building how easy it is to build and the performance that you get out of it I think the Ponte is just a straight up winner in my book yeah, so that's been my thoughts. Uh, if you have any questions about this bridge, uh, feel free to hit me up. Uh, if you want to see more this type of reviews and building guides, uh, we can do that as well. Um, this is my first time, so please excuse my newbiness. And uh, yeah, have a great day, guys. Cheers.